Battlebots, Robot Wars, and Bugglebots fans, Otakunade here with a special bonus episode. For you see, in addition to anime, one of my interests outside of the world of Japanese cartoons and comics is robot combat. I started getting into robot combat, i.e. Battlebots and Robot Wars, when I first discovered the UK version of Robot Wars on Tech TV. I remember my first ever episode was the Extreme 2 Annihilator. I got hooked from there and, well, the rest is history. And so, because I want to give you guys a little something to chew on between episodes and not have such a huge gap between content, we are going to take a look at the 2020 season of BattleBots. But I am not alone in this endeavor, for I have two people to help me. First up, you may know him well, he's a regular on our show, it's Justin Young. Hey! And joining us to help give some insight on the new season of BattleBots, we have an actual Roboteer here with us. Please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Nate Franklin. I've been competing with robots since uh, 2012. Um, I've been competing in the smaller weight classes across the United States, and I've also made the trip over to the UK for the um, uh, robot combat web series BuggleBots, and that was a lot of fun. So once again, I have returned to a podcast to talk about robots. That's always fun. Yeah, to paraphrase Bass Rutten, he's been a roboteer for many years, and he's been fighting in the box, as you know. So he knows his things. Yeah, I know. I know one or two things about robots, so... We'll see where we go from there. So 2020, as we know, has been a very tumultuous year. We have a global pandemic, massive civil unrest, elections and chaos, virtual gaming waifus taking over YouTube, and yet, in the midst of all of this chaos in 2020, we have BattleBots. At the 11th hour, Greg Munson and Trey Roski pulled through with the fifth season of of BattleBots, and I have to applaud them for their efforts for getting this done. Even if there aren't going to be any fans there, it's still going to be a fun series regardless. Unfortunately, we will not be seeing many of the international teams that plan to enter because of the travel restrictions. So damn you, Corona-chan, you robbed us of Orby Blade. Ugh, so true. I really wanted to see Orby Blade on U.S. soil just to see what it could do. Me too. Yeah, that would have been really fun. But I'll take I'll I'll take what we've got so far. Yeah, it's a very interesting field. I don't want to say it's a weak field, but it's definitely one that's wide open. It feels very wide open without bite force there. Yeah, several robots that appeared in the previous seasons are taking the year off. Yeti. Blacksmith, Bombshell, and the biggest absence of all is Paul Ventimiglia with Bite Force. For some, it's a disappointment that the reigning champion isn't coming back to defend his crown. To others, it's a blessing, as it means that somebody else will rise to the top. I think it's interesting, because this is the first, like, televised robot event in quite a while, to my knowledge, where the reigning champ just straight up didn't appear. I think that's pretty, like, insane. Like, usually you expect... Well, obviously, I can understand I'm not going to, like, judge the team for not, but it's just... It's really interesting that this is the first time it's happened in quite a while. I'm trying to think of, like, what the last... The only real times I can think where the reigning champion in robot combat didn't show up to a televised event was Slicer in the Dutch Robot Wars and Hazard for that one season of BattleBots. I was going to say Hazard was the last time I remember that happening. And then I think Spaz didn't show up, who won when Hazard wasn't there, and just, you know, just sort of, just came and left. <laughs> that sounds about right. But there are going to be some changes to the format this year, from what I have heard. Nate, would you mind elaborating on that? Oh my god, I actually, like, straight up forgot. I've been busy with other stuff. I don't remember how the format goes. The only thing I remember is that it's, like, a round of 32 instead of a round of 16. Yeah, I... Yeah, the main tournament got extended this year from 16 in the playoffs, or the chase, if you will, to 32. 
I sort of have mixed feelings about that because on one hand, I kind of feel that it sort of dilutes the competition. And also, does this mean we're going to be seeing fewer fights for this format? Like everybody gets three fights instead of, say, four? Uh, I'm not I... sure, actually. I can't comment on that for reasons. I have someone on the inside. All right, well, I won't press too hard, Justin, because I'm just an armchair roboteer. What the hell would I know? But that said, we've got 62 robots to go through, and get the popcorn and Dr. Pepper, people. This is going to take a while to go through. So, with everything out of the way, let's start at the top and work our way down, starting with Aegis... Aegis? Aegis? I don't know. Aegis? I don't know how you pronounce that. I oh, Aegis. I think it's Aegis? Because I've heard it pronounced multiple different ways. Like, I have the game 13 Sentinels. It's spelt Aegis, but they pronounce it as Aegis. I'm having trouble making heads or tails of it because I swore I saw that word in, like, a game or an anime somewhere, and they pronounced it Aegis. I'm not sure. I'll just go with Aegis for now, since that's what I've heard. So Aegis, yeah. it's a flipper, and it has a rather unique shape to it. I look at that shape and I go, Judge Shred 5. <laughs> I look at it and go, that speed bump I ran over <laughs> uh, going through residential roads today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there you go. It looks like I could wear that thing as a hat. <laughs> it does look um, like a hat. Judging from the picture, it looks not that tall in comparison to other bots. So I'm thinking about like some other bots we're going to mention, like Malice, and um, might have actually might have some difficulties because their weapon is a bit higher off the ground. So it might be an awkward shape to strike at. But it'll be really interesting to see how it performs. I'm curious to see how their flipper works because you don't see too many flippers like this on battle bots because oftentimes. It's merely a flipping arm. We were going to have a wedge flipper with Orion, but Corona-chan happened. But the thing that worries me, of course, is that it's armored in fiberglass. Oh yeah, yeah, that could be an issue. It's a big issue. I was gonna say this would be... If they'd armored it properly, this would be... A, this could be a really good flipper design because it's long and low like Hydra. And we all know how well Hydra did last year. But it only works if it's got solid armor underneath of it. And from if it's in fiberglass, one good hit, over. That's it. Stick a fork in it. It's done. I will say if it fights a big spinner, I would wear a mask when going into that arena. And it's not because of COVID. If you have seen what happens when fiberglass shatters, that stuff is dusty. You inhale that thing, yep. you're going to be coughing for a good oh, minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got to be careful with all that stuff. Yep. Yep. My, it's just like watching monster trucks crash. Lots of dust. <laughs> Very dusty. The next team we're going to talk about is one of only a handful of international teams that was at the competition this year. It is Adam number 94, representing... India. It is a joint venture between Roboteers from both India and Canada. This thing looks very simple, if I do say so myself. I'd I just say I should I, we should call this thing Son of a Digger, because that paint job is immaculate. And I don't know if you've ever seen Son of a Digger, but it looks just like it. Right down to the flame pattern. Oh yeah, it does. I remember making a robot arena two bot in like 2010 with that exact same paint job. This is a very simple looking design. Got old school style wheels from the looks of things. It's kind of like an Indian black dragon. Front and midsection look very black dragon-esque. And I do like what they did with those uh, leading forks right down there. That's actually kind of clever. I'm at least happy, though, that India is being represented in robot combat, and hopefully they set a good example for their home country, because, and I really hate to say this, India has sort of become somewhat of a meme in the robot combat community for all the wrong reasons. 
Because if you watch any footage of Indian robot combat, it's very lax, very poor safety standards. There was a robot combat fight in India that went viral where... I think it was a lightweight fight where one of the bots hit another one and they sent a piece of debris flying that went right through the glass and knocked out somebody in the audience. Oh, shy hot That is graph. That's graphic sounding. The guy was okay, but it was basically a video where the robot combat community came together and said, see, this is how you don't set up an arena. Yeah, I know they've gotten a bit better. I know it's kind of sad how whenever robot combat goes viral, it tends to be, like, for bad stuff. Like, it was this and the time that YouTube started deleting robot videos because they thought they were animal cruelty for some reason, <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious, but <laughs> I, I'm also sad. It's so funny. It's so funny to this day. I'm sorry. We, I, we all, I mean, we all were scared that we'd have to, like like move our videos somewhere else but it was also just kind of funny just how ridiculous it was i forgot that even happened thank you for reminding me of that nate but adam number 94 considering that we don't have that many international teams i will at least praise them for making the effort to come over here i don't think they're going to make the top 32 though uh, i think it's gonna depend on their build quality they won't come last let's be honest they're not I don't see them as a legitimate title threat. That They're, being said, get together, Japan. We're waiting for you over here. Oh my god, I'm honestly shocked we haven't seen any Japanese teams in Robot Combat, considering how big the sumo scene in Robot Combat is over there. Right? I've been saying that since 2000, what, 13? 2013, that we need to have some, that the Japanese need to start showing up here. Yeah, I'm really surprised no one over there has gotten the idea. And considering I'm pretty sure one of either Robot Wars, BattleBots, or even King of Bots has made it over there. So they, they know what the stuff is. They just haven't done it yet for some reason. Well, hopefully NBC Universal can get that show airing on Japanese TV somewhere. Oh lord, they better. But Adam94, I see it yeah. going 2-2 two and two at most. That sounds reasonable. Yeah, same here. And to go from absolutely reasonable to absolutely daft, we have Axe Backwards. How are they standing the bot up like that? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> cheating. Nano machines, son. They're extremely cheating. <laughs> the only question is where are they cheating? This is the third time we've seen Axe Backwards, and as much as I really don't want to bring back the Prove It list, I feel this is kind of a prove-it year for Kurt Durgin. I can't disagree with that, although I'm going to go a little bit easier on them since no one expects a ton out of them. I remember some of the funniest moments on um, BattleBots <laughs> update would be about them, and <laughs> that's really it. I'm not expecting much. Me neither. They've only won like two fights in their entire time. Two fights, and I'm not even sure how to this day. No I, one explained that. I mean, their most memorable moment last year was getting yeeted out of the arena by Mammoth. Don't forget when Deep Six <laughs> broke them oh, into yes. third. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to bring that up, too. I remember watching that, and Brandon and I were just laughing ourselves silly for, like, what, three to five minutes <laughs> just watching that fight? You know, like, I see that fight three times and I still got a chuckle out of it to this day. Even if Axe Backwards never works the way it's intended to, it always goes out in the most entertaining ways fashion. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I really, really don't want to call any sort of battle bot a jobber. But Axe Backwards is kind of the Al Snow of BattleBots. It's not going to win often, but by God, is it fun to watch. Yeah, and it's something different. I mean, it's a drum on wheels. Like, come on. It's, yeah. A it, very Florida robot. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Person, it's about the most Florida robot out there. That should be on their t-shirts. 
I hope I hope Kurt's really? watching this and he takes that idea mm-hmm. into consideration. He really should. I'd buy that. It's the only other full body vertical drum outside of Barbarous. And they seem to suffer from the same problems, too. Also, one last thing I want to mention about Axe Backwards. On their profile on the BattleBots website, Kurt Durgin says that his favorite tool is the internet. Make a... (laughs) You okay there, buddy? I'm sorry, that hit me right in the funny bone, because I just thought of the implications of that. (laughs) I'm a total moron, and I don't get the joke, so... Please, please send me a DM after this is done, so you don't have to. We don't have to hear your uh, keyboard going all off, so I can understand. I feel re- like a total bone end for not realizing this. I'll edit this out, but what is another meaning of the word tool? Oh yeah, god damn it. <laughs> okay, now I'm <laughs> leaving that in. <laughs> please do. I I saved your podcast. <laughs> you can cut that part out though but from one axe to another we go from axe backwards to <clears throat> axolotl a robot that was crowdfunded in order to be here that's interesting also i'm glad you got that name right in one take Ooh, i first uh saw it on on uh facebook of all places i was like oh this is gonna be hard for people to get right mercifully Everyone I've talked to pronounces it right. I kind of have to pronounce it right or else Brain will get mad at me. But I like their designs. Very spiky, very visually appealing. But it's prone to death at bad angles. That's a really good bot name. I'm writing that down. Death by angles? Death at bad angles. angles. (laughs) (laughs) Please keep that. (laughs) Damn it, Nate. Stop making us laugh. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you not, do you want me here or not? We want you here, Nate. We do. All right. Anyway, I think it looks. I think it looks like a solid two-two. Maybe I'm just worried that they don't have an anti-horizontal configuration. But other than that, those those forks look pretty nasty. They just got to be careful not to get them stuck anywhere, especially like the kill saws, like lock jaw. But other than that, yeah, two and two. I'm saying. I would be more afraid if they got stuck on the screws, but I do like the multi-layered wheels that they have. Yeah. And I also like, uh, the sides of the forks look hand-painted, like the patterns on the side. I did not notice that until you pointed it out. Um, Good observation. Yeah, this thing's a two and two. Two and two, done in by horizontal spinner, potentially a few. I can at least say that I'm happy that they were able to get there through crowdfunding. And I think that's the least you could say about this machine. I'd say that is the most metal uh, fact about Axolotl, in my opinion. That is so cool that they were able to successfully crowdfund their way onto the show, especially in 2020. Oh, yeah. Regardless of how it does, that's no uh, small feat. And now we move on to a bot that became a meme in Season 3. We have the return of Bale Spear. Woo-hoo! I've been waiting to see this bot make a comeback for a while after seeing it in person at the last time I was at Motorama. Oh yeah, me too. And Earl's such an entertaining guy, the whole farmer getting thing. I love the the visuals, like how it, it looks like a tractor and I like on the front it's got the um what's it called? The uh the barn and then the um Silo. Um Silo, Silo. I think that's pretty cool. And it looks more distinct than the first one did, so I'm really excited to see how it does. It has a very industrial look, as if it was built in a barn. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's got a, it's themed. Managed to do multiple things at once. It's distinct, it's themed, it looks beefy. And especially that front end. The front end in that, in the shot they use, on the website, it looks like it means actual business this time. Sadly, in a field full of deadly spinners, I don't see it doing too well, but like Axolotl and Adam number 94, I'm very happy that they're there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. I think with uh, free shipping not being there, they're a prime candidate to be 
sort of the people's champion this year. I would say that Bale Spear is a common man's robot. Very basic design, simple weapon, built by blue collar men. I think that's a really good way of putting it. And mm-hmm. it definitely brings out the, you don't have to be a uh, mechanical engineer with like a bajillion degrees to build a bot. I was going to say, that's a very bold and fitting way to put it, especially since Shark Coprian is there. And of course, it, and we all know how that robot was built in a very uh, down-home sort of way. But yeah, very common man robot. Definitely, that's what I'm going to say, new people's champion title right here. Calling it right now. So three cheers to the Earl of Pancoast the Third! Yay! Yay! Moving on from one meme to the next, the king of shunt posting has returned. John Reed is back with Beta. So welcome back, old friend. So, I mean, I'm really excited to see it perform. I think it had a really great run in uh, Season 2. The only thing is, if they don't have any solution for fighting Verts with Forks, it's going to get demolished by them. What we saw in Robot Wars, what Aftershock did to Terror Hertz, it got hit so hard that a part of Terror Hertz's wedge was fused to Aftershock's disc. Also, their hammer this time around is powered by pneumatics instead of being electrical powered. And the hammer looks a lot smaller this time around, which I think is both a good and a bad thing. Because on the negative side, it doesn't have as much reach. But on the plus side, they won't have as many accuracy problems. Yeah, and they can devote Uh, um, more weight to the other parts of the bat, like armoring it up. I see a couple things. One... Small hammer is actually going to be a net positive because my problem I've had with the that I've seen with the electrical actuation system, and this is coming from sort of secondhand from someone who actually tried to build an electrical hammer bot, is that you're worried about the vulnerability of the weapon train first and foremost, and I think by getting rid of that, it's, it simplifies it, and it's one less thing that can go wrong basically. And the second thing I noticed is those tiny back wheels. That's prime real estate for some destruction. Possibly internally. I would worry more about their internals and their rear wheels, because even though they're at the back, exposed wheels on BattleBots seems to be kind of a meta. Yeah, because it's almost always 1v1, so they don't have to worry about someone, like, sneaking up from behind. And the best way to protect your wheels is just uh, good driving. Obviously, everyone's prone to mistakes, but then you also run into the issue, if you have wheel guards, they get hit, they get stuck in the wheels, and then you're, like, it's the... Just as bad as uh, losing your wheels. Sometimes that extra protection can work out against you. Ask Dominator 2. To some extent, Vladiator, because I remember Vladiator almost lost its uh, title fight against Minion because the Lexan that was closing off its wheels got stuck in the wall. But as far as Beta's success goes, I think they could make the top 32 this year. I think John Reed and Gabriel Stroud, hashtag pray for Gabe, They've got enough experience under their belts to where they know what they're doing. The only thing I want out of this team this year, give us some memorable memes, John. Fingers crossed. I think, Fingers that's, crossed. I think that's the best thing we're going to hope for. They're going to do better than Quantum in that they're going to make some progress in the tournament and they're going to get felled by a bad draw. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. And lastly, before we move on, let us all remember, wait for a good hit. Indeed. So from one meme lord to a robot that will no doubt have many memes written about it, that is the Big Dill, and if any of you make the Rick and Morty reference, I'm going to reach through this screen and strangle you. I'm fully expecting Chris and Kenny to make some sort of, no, and for Ruth to make some sort of pickle Rick joke, so I'm just gonna like avoid it like the plague. <laughs> If he makes a Pickle Rick reference, I'm going to hang myself. Well, (laughs) funny we get to them because happen to be related to one of the team members on the big bill this year. Really? Oh, yeah. Look on the far right of the team photo. 
That's my brother Brandon. What? No way! No, whip out your birth certificate and his birth certificate. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I, I really appreciate it if you didn't make stuff up, just so you could get like you could say, "Oh, I'm related to a um, person on podcast." I'm sorry. <laughs> He's pro. He can hear us now. By the way. <laughs> oh, tell him I said hi. By the way. Oh. <laughs> <I know. laughs> <laughs> That's the magic of kayfabe. <laughs> oh boy, it is ha- our our house has been quite the fun place since he got back. Mm. It sucked when he left, and it's fun since he got back. And he's been the guy who I'm getting all this information on. I actually thought about bringing him on tonight, except he right now is working uh, right above me, right above from where I'm recording, and we'll be doing so. For at least until the weekend, but maybe I'll try to get him on the show later on. We'll see. I don't know if this is going to be a one-off or if I'm actually going to be reviewing BattleBots as a side hustle, but who knows? So, the big deal. Nate, you go first. So, I remember on Discord, I was talking with uh, Mike Jeffries, and he said that, like, if he were to design something completely new to, like, sort of break the vert meta, it would basically be big deal. I'm not going to say, oh, this bot is 100% going to beat Bite Force, but the forks look long enough to outreach the wedgelets on, like, the other verts that are currently here. So, I think it has a decent chance, and I've seen uh, a manual drive in, like, the videos from events he's been to, so I think it has a really good shot. So, I'm thinking this is top 32 material. Without question, it's one of my dark horses. And uh, <laughs> I should mention that this used to be Warhawk. Is that correct? Uh, you are correct. Yeah, I believe so. Well, Warhawk, even though they've underperformed in previous seasons, every fight they've been in, they've always been entertaining. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very much so. And with this, I get a very big panic attack vibe from this machine. You should. There's. It's obviously been moved. But Brandon has a model of this robot. It's also right below me. And also, another fun fact, this was at the Robot Ruckus last year, and they were pitting not far from Brandon and I. And let me tell you something. This robot, once it can grab something, it's going to do some damage. A lot of damage. The one thing I like about the design, I like the little um, prongs above the main forklift mechanism to trap the robot. Yep. It's a design feature that's also may have made its way to Bone Dead Robotics at some point. I'm just saying. Good choice. I think this year the spirit of Western Armed Robotics is going to make some noise in the competition. The only thing that's holding them back is that it's not a damaging weapon. So we'll have to wait and see where the chips fall with the big dill. And this is a good time to mention that I like this robot because I like pickles. I'm glad you like pickles. I like good I just like the I do um, like pickles as well. I just like the design. I like the color scheme a lot. If I'm not eating with the family and like they have like pickles on their plate and they haven't eaten them, I'm always gonna ask, "Hey, are you gonna eat those pickles?" Maybe a SpongeBob joke in here somewhere. Let us spare that one too. <laughs> but to go for my 600 IQ reference, I'm going to say Stanley Cup champion Blake Coleman would approve of this robot. But we move on from a pickle to a dragon. As the boys from Brazil are back with Black Dragon. Woo! I'm really excited oh to see like... this. It had a really uh, fun run in um the last season. I think it could do some pretty good upsets. I see they added a new um front end attachment to the bot because I know they ran into some issues with uh, like Lockjaw getting over to them. So I'm thinking it's gonna make the top 32. And I know they got rid of the uh, the flamethrower, and hopefully they've improved the reliability of their weapon. It's the only real thing holding them back is uh, their weapon reliability. It's dual belt driven now, so they've got a little extra insurance on their robot. I wonder, though, this time if they're going to have interchangeable wedges like they did last time. Uh, I'm trying to find that out for myself. 
No, it looks like they do because you could see the bolt with lock nuts holding the two forks in. And then there's one where the wedge is. So you, they might just be able to swap the wedge out or at the very least just swap out the uh, two forks at the front. Oh, wow. Yeah, for sure. They definitely are rocking interchangeable parts this year. I don't think there's much we can say about Black Dragon, but my biggest concern is that they're going to have a monsoon type season where they have a great first year and then they undergo the sophomore slump. Oh, I actually have them. I made this prediction before filming started. I actually think they will go to the final four this year, barring a mechanical. Last year, they had a lot of problems with having mechanical failures. And I think if they can sort that out, they're going to go really deep. They did really good last year, but with a lot of the big teams not there this year, I think the door is wide open for them, but they just got to walk through it. All there is to it. I can see them getting into the top 16, but whether they get to the final four all depends on who they're drawn against. Because they got in because they won the Desperado tournament, which, by the way, apparently there's no Desperado tournament, and... Honestly, I'm fine with that. I'm not surprised at all. I don't want to say the concept was BS. I just think that it was a good idea, but it had its fair share of problems. And that's all that I have to say. I think there were a couple drawbacks, but overall, I kind of liked it. I liked the drama it produced. Moving on to a new team this year... I hope you people aren't arachnophobic, because our next robot is a spoopy spider, Black Widow. Okay, that that name, the body, this is, I'm going to say, it, this is my opinion, one of the top five prettiest robots of this season. The commitment to theming <laughs> is impeccable. I just hope, I'm like, I am praying that there's like, they've devoted some part of the weight to have like little motors so the arms can move up and down because I'm assuming that it's wheeled but it also has like the arms just moving up and down for show. That would be awesome. I don't care how well it does, how much it gets trashed. It looks awesome. You and me both, Nate. Yeah, the thing looks like it's going to be ripped into a million pieces and I don't care. I mean, the top doesn't look like it's secured on very well. All the legs are basically breakaway bits. Some bots get smashed up into a million pieces. And frankly, I don't give a darn. It's just, it's fun to watch certain bots get destroyed. And if the team takes it well, good on them. Couldn't have said better myself. Yeah, I agree. And hey, I can already say just from its design, it's better than the two other robots that have bore the name Black Widow. Uh huh. One last little note about Black Widow that makes me love it even more. It shoots out silly string from its tail. So you have to admire their commitment to the bit, but... God bless him, this thing's going to get swatted down. And that part will get meme to death. Silly string tail, ooh, there's going to be so many memes this year from that alone. Moving on, now we have a robot whose previous version I actually saw in person at a Norwalk Havoc event, and that is Bloodsport. This year, they swapped out their pizza-shaped robot in exchange for a pizza box-shaped robot. With the world's gnarliest pizza cutter on top. That thing looks beautiful. I don't believe that's a picture of the actual bot, and that's like the render. It looks beautiful. It shouldn't fight. It shouldn't fight. It looks too good to myself. fight. It's a four-wheel drive horizontal overhead spinner, and I adore this design. I just love the color palette with the red wheels, the hinges on the front, they're going to do a lot better than they did last year. I'm calling that right now. This thing's going like three and one. Hey, dude, that was my prediction. <laughs> I'm really excited to see Bloodsport. It's going to do a lot of damage and it won't have to worry about like rolling around on the arena. And yeah, I'm, and I know that they also have like interchangeable bars. So that should be pretty fun. You don't see too many uh, three pronged bars on battle bots. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah, it will be. I'm really excited to see them. I want to see our weapon at full speed. It's going to look gorgeous with the black base with the red tips. Yeah, the little blood splatters. That's a pain element that I'm surprised we don't see more of on combat robots, to be honest with you. Well, there's one that has a little bit of a hand-painted element, but it's not until much later down the line. 
I think we've all said our share about Bloodsport. I think it's going to do really well. So now we move on to a team that was not supposed to be here this year, but I guess we're kind of forced to bring it out because of COVID. And that is the return of Bronco. Yeah, I was... Ah, Bronco. It was weird, like, in the initial stages before all the, like, pandemic stuff, when Bronco was taking the season off, like, because it was the first, like, televised BattleBots event without uh, Team Inertia Labs. Pretty sure they were there. They weren't there in season one. I don't remember, but it's nice to see them back. I hope they rebound from last season. I think for them, it's going to be a nightmare scenario. And I don't mean that in a worst case scenario kind of deal. What I mean is that they're mostly just going to be there as a reserve. I think it because they didn't intend to enter, but were forced to be called in anyway, that they're mostly just going to be there for like whiteboard matches. That does sound kind of consistent with the data I got from Brandon. If they're competing full-time, I think they're going to have a better season. If not, then we'll get, we're going to get some good exhibition content out of them, that's for sure. Yeah, even if they don't do well, I look forward to whatever reason Bradley has up his sleeve next. I feel that Bronco has kind of run its course as a battle bot, and I am aching to see what he gives us next time. I predict that within the next season or two, we may see, we're going to see a Bronco evolution, that's for sure. Hopefully. Other Nate, your take? You just nailed it. Uh, really no more to say for me, to be honest. And from one BattleBots legend to the next, we have the return of Captain Shredderator. All right. So, Captain Shredderator, I just straight up hope they don't go out spectacularly this year. And if, frankly, I'd just be happy with them not getting erased. Yeah, I feel that in every season, since it got KO'd by Chomp of all things, Captain Shredderator is just underperformed. And it's sad because when I was watching Robot Combat on YouTube, watching things like the Combots Cup and Robo Games, Captain Shredderator bedazzled me. I loved just how lethal it was but it just hasn't really shown its lethality when it comes to televised competition. You pretty much put it perfectly right there. They brought like several shells to it this year so they can adjust to its competition, but to me this just feels like another team that's on the prove it list. The biggest thing for them is just their reliability. For like the last few seasons there have just been issues where they're doing pretty well. I think they're at a point where like they have a they have a good bot. They it's just those little tiny reliability issues that prevent them from doing as well as they should. Like it's either that they stop working when they're doing well or they just get absolutely clobbered. And it sucks. I'd honestly prefer to see them get clobbered. I think they'd rather go out in a blaze of glory than just unspectacularly stop. Especially there was one fight last year. I think it was against uh is it Wan Hu where they were just they were winning? Yeah, yeah, just, Wan Hu. Yeah, that was that was a tough one to watch actually because they had it in the bag and then something just completely wrecked their day all of a sudden. I think Justin is on the money about Captain Shredderator. How well they do this year will ultimately depend on their reliability issues. Because if they can work out all the gremlins, their top thirty-two material. If not, it's unfortunately another disappointing season for the Navi family. And it's sad because I love all of uh, Team Logicom's robots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could have said better myself. And from one veteran to the next, the ever-controversial, but evolved, Chomp. Nate, you got this one. Oh my god, I am so excited for this. Well, this, like, everyone knew that, like, Chomp was going to be a walking robot, but... Only up until recently did we actually not know what it physically looked like. And when they revealed it, like, oh, my God, there was so much hype. Like, before it was just, like, oh, pictures of, like, the individual parts. But I am so pumped to see this thing. I don't care what happens to it. Just seeing it, like, move is just, it's enough to, like, really get exciting. This thing is a work of art. I'm not going to lie. I absolutely love the look of Chomp. I called the old Chomp the Mortis of BattleBots, if that makes any sense. I'm, I'm assuming because it's over-engineered? Yeah, 
but I rescind that title for this season. It's over-engineered in all the right ways this time around. Between its walking mechanism and its rotating hammer turret, Chomp is going to be an entertaining watch this year. Even this thing if, is a monster. This is another robot where I have to say, even if it doesn't win any fights, I commend the team for building something that is just so unique and just so different from the rest of the field, and it's going to break my heart when this thing gets destroyed. This thing, this thing is definitely, it's a monster. It's a, it's like something out of some, one of those combat robot pastiche moments you see on kids shows. Or oh, someone point. shows up a robot for it with ridiculous, impossible, remote control cartoon thing. This is one in real life. It makes me very excited. I'm not going to make any crazy predictions here about it winning overall because... It's not that kind of robot at the end of the day. I mean, it's going to have an impact, don't get me wrong, but I think that the the sport is a bit too, shall we say, streamlined for something like this to take off. But frankly, from an engineering perspective, this thing is fascinating and terrifying. <laughs> Even the people in my local RC track who are not builders and some of them barely watch the show when I describe this thing to them they get pumped they get excited for this thing I believe it was Sam Elliott on his preview that said that this is basically the new generation version of Mechadon where yeah it's not gonna win any fights but damn it it looks great and a lot of engineering went into this. I tip my hat to Zoe Stevenson this year for just doing the unthinkable, building a walking robot in modern times. And she also went to the filming of this while pregnant. What? That is some serious... She has some serious guts doing this show in 2020 while pregnant. That is... If I were wearing a hat... I tip my hat to that. If I were wearing a hat right now, that's a hat tip moment. That takes major guts. Hats off to Zoe Stevenson for doing that right now. Oh Ooh. yeah, oh yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, so I'm really excited to see how uh, it performs. I cannot criticize this thing in the slightest. I have gone from a chomp hater to absolutely admiring both it and its team, and I wish them all the best for this season. I just don't want to get too torn up by the uh, big spinners this year. That's all. Speaking of big spinners, we move on to a bot that was there for a cup of coffee and we didn't see much of him afterward. It's Kronos. They have traded out the tuna can for something that looks more like an upside down pie tin. I was going to say demon frisbee, but that works too. <laughs> now the demon frisbee is Captain Shredderator. Demon Frisbee Shield. Demon Frisbee Captain America Shield of Awesomeness. PM. Kronos this year looks a lot more sturdy. I love just how it's a different take on a body spinner using a single cog to drive an outer ring. The question is, is it going to stay sturdy? Because last year in a rumble, half of its body came off. That hurts seeing. And I like the exposed train of the robot and kind of her watching it fall apart there in the rumble that hurt it did deliver like one of the biggest hits of last season so i'm pretty excited to see if we at least get uh one of those good um good hits from them you know what i can't wait to see i want to see captain shredder versus chronos that should be plenty of fun and i also want to say this this team gets the award for best wardrobe Mm-hmm. That looks like something that... Shoot, I actually want to wear that outfit to a con now. <laughs> it's just so sick. Yeah, they've got, like, circuitry printed on the inside of the uh, collar flaps. I feel like it, they're following the footsteps of, like, Mobius with their costumes, which I think is really nice, because Mobius were, like, the real, like, showmen of uh, BattleBots. Yeah, we need more teams in costumes. So now we move on to another newcomer here. We have... Claw Viper, a team from Seattle who has the best team name of this entire field, Team Bad Ideas. 
I mean, that they're is not an wrong. Awesome team. <laughs> That is awesome. That is definitely the best team name of the field. I really do like their design, but it does look very oh whatever. It's just it's going to be spinner bait. Much as I hate to say it. Yeah, those screws on the outside look very vulnerable, along with the exposed drive belts. A lot of its mechanics are exposed. And we have several control bots here. In this field, we've got Big Dill and a couple others that are coming up. This thing's going to get torn to pieces. Yeah, the exposed the exposed bolts on the front and sides make me ooh, a little worried. A lot worried, actually. Prime real estate for a spinner weapon snagging. It's the belts that concern me more. Yeah, um, because I remember uh, Kevin, the uh, team captain, would, went to Motorama last year, I believe, and he brought a smaller version of it, and like it was insanely fast, and it was really fun to watch. It just had the issues with the belts coming loose, but I'm pretty excited to see how it does, because he's mentioned about how it has the two electric ATV motors and 20 miles per hour, so I'm really excited to see it perform. It's definitely a good first attempt at a robot, because I enjoy control bots because they're very technical and very calculating. They're not meant to wow you. They're a driver's type of robot. I can confirm that last part. I can definitely attest to control bots being a driver's bot because, as Brandon's shown me over the past couple months, when a control bot works, it works really well. Devastatingly well. Indeed, but in like a spinner heavy field and some of these bots on the undercard, I don't really see this thing going too far. But what do I know? So let's move on from a Viper to another Snack. It's Copperhead! Mm, welcome back, Copperhead. <laughs> I love the look of the new Copperhead. It looks grungy, it's dingy, I love the rust on it, I love the paint job, I just love everything about the new Copperhead, and I think this is the year they're finally going to break into the top 16. I couldn't agree more. This is definitely one of the bots that I can see taking advantage of the the absence of some of the bigger teams and, and the reduced field, and definitely making a deep run into the season. I love the paint job, like you said, I... Just love everything about it, and I think it can do pretty well. They had two of the most entertaining fights last season. It's fight with Gruff, and it's fight where it just got absolutely demolished by Son of Waiachi. Yep, yep. It's a uh, Sal fight was definitely one of my favorites from last season. Yeah, easily a contender for the John Reed Good Hit Award. They didn't actually win that on BattleBots update, I can't remember. I would not know. Yeah, Copperhead, Caustic Creations has done it again, and I think they're going to make some noise this season. And then we move on to another newcomer this season, and one that I have high hopes for, and that is Deadlift. Or as I have come to start calling it, Storm 3. I was going to say Storm 3, the lifting. <laughs> Bro, do you even lift? There, I got that joke out of the way. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's such a good one. This is very, it's a very simple, elegant robot. I really like the design, and um, it's so weird. I want to get make it a contender for Best in Show for its rugged simplicity. This thing looks like a tank. I don't know what it's armored in, but it looks like it could shrug off a good deal of hits. It looks fast. It's got an electric lifter, which you don't see enough of on BattleBots. I think this thing could sneak into the playoffs this year. I absolutely adore this machine, and I really want it to do well. You got it, man. I think they're going to be a sleeper this season. Yeah, keep an eye on Deadlift. Yeah, I remember they were at Motorama last year. Or they've been at Motorama for the past few years, and this year they did pretty well. They also did well at uh, Robo Games, and I believe they made the top three in the lightweights or the middleweights. I don't remember, but I, I think they can surprise a few people. Yeah, don't sleep on this team. They've got the bot, and they've got the muscles to back it up. I just love how on their page they said that as an initiation for the team... 
all the members had to deadlift deadlift. I <laughs> <laughs> love that. Oh, dear. That, that is me- awesome, though. Yeah, that means I would be ineligible for this team because even though I try to work out as many times as I can a week, I could never, ever lift that 250 pounds. I'm not a weightlifter. Same here. I mean, in fact, I just kind of got into, I kind of just got into lifting not too long ago. And now we move on to one of the other few international entries we have on this list, and that is Endgame, all the way from New Zealand. Or as Brandon revealed, New Zealand by way of Canada. Isn't Jack Barker based out of Canada now? Yeah. Yeah, Jack is Canadian as of last year. That, I believe, is how they were able to get him. Interesting. I'm just going to be up front. I'm going to miss the deal with it sunglasses, Sremek. Oh, yeah. that was. I'm going to miss that, too. We're all going to miss that. But now they've gone functionality over form with a more realistic self-writing tail. I don't know what the articulation of that thing is. It sticks straight up, so I'm guessing it's trying to prevent them from rear-ending. But what happens when your robot does the thing? Nothing you can do. There is absolutely nothing you can do. You just have to just, you know, just stand there and stare awkwardly as your bot gets counted out. Yep. You said it all there, Nate. They had a bit of a disappointing season last year. I want to put them on the prove it list, but given how far they've come and the hoops that they had to jump through, I'm going to give them a little bit of a pass right now. They had a bit of a sophomore slump, but with this sort of weakened field, I can see Endgame having a comeback season. I'm going to give them a lot of leeway, and I'm going to say they're going to get a they're going to do a, I see them doing a deep run into the field, and they may have an outside shot at contending. Well, from what we saw in the trailer, Jack Barker finally got his wish. I actually think they they have a better chance than you're um, giving them credit for, because I know they had, a, they had a tough few fights, but then the la- their last two fights were good. They knocked out Doc, which, you know... The only other bot to do it, to actually KO Duck, was Bronco, and it wasn't even by destroying it. And then they also pulled a pretty good upset against uh, Cobalt. I know that everyone expected Cobalt to make at least the top eight. So I think they have a good chance. As long as they've worked out their reliability issues, I think it's going to be an endgame redemption arc. They got a very good chance. The door is wide open. They just got to walk through it. And now... We move on to the hottest team in town. Now who needs the fire service? It's Extinguisher. AKA one of the loudest robots at uh, Robot Ruckus last year. Well, I have good news for you, Justin. They got rid of the siren. That's good. But that was only half the loudness. The other half was whenever they fired their weapon. Whole building shook at one point. <laughs> I I wish we saw more of Extinguisher last year. We need more axe bots, and I love that we've got a four wheel drive axe bot because it can not only hammer you, it can also push you around the arena. The Extinguisher team, they had a few televised fights on the Science Network, and ironically, in one of their fights, they caught fire. Mm, yep, heard about that. Although. I think this is one of the fights that I ended up missing because I don't have cable, unfortunately. But that aside, I think for them, they need reliability this year first and foremost. Once they get that established, then I don't know. Maybe they'll give the the normal mid-pack teams a good run for their money this year. Yeah, it, it'll either sneak in or it'll go two and two. But we have to mention that they have a secret weapon this year. They have a fire extinguisher on board. Kind of fitting since he sent the car fire last year. I don't know what good that what purpose that serves other than being aesthetically pleasing, but it's just fun that a team that's themed to firefighting has a fire extinguisher on board their robot. I I think that's amazing commitment to theming. You have to admire this team for committing to the gimmick, especially with the fire pants. I sold John, uh, the team captain, one of my um, old transmitters, 
So I, uh, that's the only bot that I've actually contributed to, which now I, well, I think that's pretty cool. So if they lose, it's your fault. Yeah, I'm gonna feel really awful, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll have to apologize if something happens related to the transmitter. But if Extinguisher is simple and straightforward, having both a hammer and a vertical spinner, this next bot, oh boy, we need to talk about fusion. You know that gif of that dude who just turns right in the camera and then all the question marks start popping up? That's <laughs> me looking at this thing right now. Are you curious as to how this thing even works? How does it even work? I mean, <laughs> wow. Have you seen the footage of it spinning up in the test box? I saw it, and then I just got, I was like, okay, this is quite terrifying. This thing is, it's a cartoon. <laughs> it's some sort of monster out of a cartoon. That's, that's all there is to it. This thing is a monster. I, this thing... With Team Wayachi, it's either feast or famine. This thing will either destroy everything in its path, or it will end up like Falcon did last year. They usually bring marketing duds or completely bug nuts things that completely that scare the bejesus out of everybody and end up flipping everyone's prediction cards on their lid. I mean, I was literally... Their team history, show up with something completely nuts, scare everyone, and then win a few fights. I feel like not many teams would have the guts to do that just because, like, Team Wayachi is basically, like, an infinite money pit because they have, like, their own <laughs> facility where they build their own bots because they build, like, they build equipment for, like, the meat industry, so, like, conveyor belts and stuff, so they can afford to make just, like, the craziest stuff. Like, this and Falcon, no one is, like, thinking about battle bots. Like, oh, okay, what should I build for battle bots? Oh, yeah, I should build this. This this is something I can afford to make. This is, so, like, I think it's amazing they can just build whatever they want. That is awesome. That is amazing. I also heard they make those big, giant, scary sausage machines like you see on how it's made. I heard that's their, that's their work as yeah, well. Yeah, they make quite a lot. And... They make the... Also, the most important sponsor of all time, they make the Utter Guns. Yeah. A sponsor. This bot definitely reeks of a team that has too much money to spend. They're like F1 designers if F1 designers were completely nuts. It's just so insane. And the sad thing is, I think this could do pretty well. I think it's going to end up on the scared of bejesus out of everyone's scale. It's going to ruin quite a few people's days, a few people's brackets, and I, 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 can't, I can't even figure out how it's going to get taken down. Other than maybe the show schedulers just make it fight Sal or something, I don't know. <laughs> like If it has to face a flipper, I would be concerned there, but... If you're a spinner, how do you fight this thing? No, that's the ultimate way to break the um, four-wheel vert with interchangeable front-end meta. You just make something with two different spinning weapons, so they have to choose which one they're going to run with. <sighs> Fusion is definitely on my list of bots that I'm most excited to watch, and we move on from something that was created by a maniac to something that is a lot more subdued and realistic... Gamma 9! I'm barely holding in my laughter from their team picture. <laughs> that is... Uh, that, there's something about their picture on the website that just makes you want to laugh every time you see it. The guy on the far left looks like he's been photoshopped in. <laughs> exactly. It's the shoe! It's the shoe! That there are a few of them that actually look like people were just photoshopped in last minute, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> the way they're standing. <laughs> <laughs> the way they look like they're standing. 
Do you guys remember the old singular commercials back when singular wireless was still a thing? And their commercials had things lined up to look like cell cell phone bar reception. They look like they're advertising singular. Oh that what it like what an oddly specific <laughs> reference. I never thought I'd be like thinking about that now, but thanks. I'm not bitter. I'm just like, wow, I never expected to hear that. Uh, I did not expect that. That's a now I can't unsee it. I can't unsee it really. We've talked more about the team photo than we have about the actual robot look, which it looks <clears throat> like something out of Speed Racer. It looks like one of like the old Batmobiles. And I think it looks pretty cool. I like the dome on it. I mean, it's probably going to probably hurt it in the long run, but I think it looks really cool. It looks like Smidzy and Dreadnought did the fusion dance. It's like Speed Racer dumped in a blender with wacky racers if it had been made in 1984. It's the Mach 5 meets Kit from Knight Rider. Oh, that's a really good way to put it. It is yet another lifter, and the lifter looks kind of flimsy. It's I not... think it's just flimsy enough to work. It's not a solid lifter, though. Like, the gaps and the little bars, it looks more like the top of a shopping cart than it does a more sturdy lifter. Yeah, I do wonder why they went in that direction. I kind of hope that they have a backup plan waiting there underneath. Or they can swap on in between matches, you never know. But it's flimsy, but yeah, it's just, I feel like it's just flimsy enough to work. Like if they're hiding something, or they got a good backup plan for, say, an old Gemini, unfortunately, <laughs> then I think they may be able, they may squeeze a victory here and there. We'll see. Also, you mentioned they have a little dome in the center. Their favorite robot is R2D2. Because he has a dome. Uh, love that. <laughs> the but, funniness keeps on coming with this team. But wait, no, there's more. Their favorite tool oh, is intimidation. And their job? Drive and complain. I think we broke Justin. You did. For this <laughs> next robot, please. All right, let's go to something that hopefully won't make us laugh, and that is uh, Gemini. And the one problem I have always had with Gemini is the same problem that I've had with Robot Wars Gemini. It's a robot that can't get out of its own way. Mm hmm. Such is the risk of running a multi -bot. battle bots, but only when Gemini hits the other Gemini. <laughs> yeah, other Nate pretty much nailed it on the head. They do have armor that they can fit on one of the robots so that they can make it a heavyweight, but that's like me taking a unicycle, duct taping another unicycle to it, and saying, Look, I have a bicycle now. Basically, or I have another analogy for that, but. That's better, actually. Really, I just want Gemini to come back with something new. I feel that they've sort of proven the multi-bot idea is good on paper, but in actual practicality, with all the issues this team has faced, I think it's time to move on to something else. I yeah, think I'd say, yeah, clean slate design, and 86, the self-destruction Gordon Ramsay style. Other Nate, your thoughts? I mean, I don't want to be harsh. I'm not expecting like too much for them, but I do always find it funny when they accidentally hit each other. Although they probably don't find it as fun. It's like in because I watch a lot of hockey. It's like when two guys run into each other in hockey, not like a body check, but like when two teammates collide. All the fans in the arena will laugh, but if that's what I did. Sorry about that. Continue. <laughs> what? I pictured it. I actually just pictured two guys skating into each other. Hey, don't laugh, Justin. Like Justin, seriously, <clears throat> don't laugh at that because whenever two teammates run into each other, 
oftentimes that can result in some serious injury. Yeah, well, but serious but... injury is even more hilarious. Not in hockey, it's not. Oh, it's unless it's in a beer league, then it's hysterical. You got it. You but, got it. But yeah, let's move on to a bot that has taken a long hiatus, but is now back and better question mark than ever. Ghost Raptor. Oh dear. Well, it it, it well, looks flimsy. It's well, gonna it's gonna snap in half. I'm fully expecting it too. Well, you guys at least showed up. Where is the protection on this thing? This thing is just screaming to be torn into pieces. I give Chuck Pitzer credit for coming back, but I'm guessing that this is sort of a raptor aesthetic, but in 2020, this thing is going to be all around the arena. I joked about it with Black Widow, but for Team Raptor, they should know better. Man, the the whole uh, they have holes where there shouldn't be holes, and the quote unquote hole aesthetic. They pulled they they got away with it on some of their early two thousands bots, but putting speed holes on a bot in twenty twenty, why? Just why? The chains on, on the drive wheels are also exposed, too. Holy cow, I completely missed that. It's definitely a very, like, oddly specified, specialized bot. I remember talking to Mike Jeffries about it, and he was, like, saying... This was years ago, and it was, like, saying if Bombshell's only weapon was the adjustable horizontal and that was it, that's basically what Ghost Raptor is. So I'm honestly expecting it to, like, win one or two fights against, like non-spinners, and then get destroyed. That's, yeah. that's what I think is going to happen. We're sorry, Chuck, but your robot's going home in a bin bag. It's going to be a one-hit wonder, and then complete and total destruction. Same here, man. Same here. And so, we move on to another veteran of the sport, with Gigabyte who have traded in the aesthetic of Windows for Guy Fieri, which is the single biggest downgrade of the season. Mm-hmm. I was actually going to was gonna be a bit nicer to them with the flame job. I, I like the shirts, and I kind of see what they were trying to do with the flame stickers, although I do wonder why in the world they stopped only on one side. Wait, it's, they're only on one side? Yeah, they don't wrap around the robot. And I'm like, wait, why did you do that? That's pointless. Dude. Maybe it's on the opposite the flame side? On the front and called it. Pretty sure it's on the opposite side, too. But it's they don't have the flame pattern going all the way around, which... I think is disappointing. Well, depending on how you look at Flames, they either traded the Google Chrome aesthetic for either Guy Fieri, which is a downgrade, or Bam Bam Bigelow, which is an upgrade. But Gigabyte, I really want Gigabyte to do well this season because, once again, when I was a wee lad watching robot combat videos on YouTube, I saw what Gigabyte could do. One of the first robot combat videos I ever watched on YouTube was Gigabyte versus Biohazard, where Biohazard effectively got foobarred. I think that was my first ever YouTube fight as well. And we've seen what it can do in both the live circuit and in China, but when it comes to battle bots, they've just had all kinds of gremlins, and I really want them to get sorted out this time around, because Gigabyte at full power is scary. I want to see them get past their gremlins and really show up because if there's any year they need to show up for, it's this one. I do think it's also interesting to see Matt Maxim on the team because he's basically the king of control bots, but and now he's with a team that has a spinner, so I think that's kind of neat. Yeah, I found that out from uh, from Brian. I thought it was it's an interesting team pickup to say the least, and I hope it pays off. It was a bad bushing on the top. Season 4, they got punted out by Witch Doctor. Will the third time be the charm for Gigabyte? We'll have to wait and see. 
But now we move on to another newcomer, and... Oh, boy. Hello, Grabot. Um... How do you make sense of this thing? You don't. It's a bot that grabs. Therefore, Grabot. You don't want to talk about robots that are going to be splattered all over the arena. Just looking at the close-up and how this thing is held together... They're going to have to pray a lot of rosaries to make sure this thing comes out in one piece. Because those grabby arms do not look like they can grabby anything. They're going to be scraping this thing off the walls. You know what? I at least give them kudos for doing something interesting on a yeah. first attempt. No, yeah, I, def I definitely agree. So I'm interested to see how it performs. They're a team that I want to see come back with something new. Maybe not grab bot, but... Something crazy like this machine, even if its sole purpose is just to be entered in and absolutely demolished. Plus, I also like the little uh, weapons that they have with them. It's a nice little touch. You can obviously tell this team's got a lot of personality to them. And now let's move on to... And now let's move on to one of my favorite robots from last year. And the bot that, in my eyes, had the best fight of the season... It's Gruff. <clears throat> One of the few robots I can safely say is named after itself. <clears throat> Although I do like the improvements they made this year. It does look more streamlined and less beat up, which I guess they had to fix since they quite literally had their chassis bent. But they still kept that rough and tumble, go get them <laughs> aesthetic. And, well, once again, this is one of the bots that I'm going to go out on a limb and say... Deep run. I don't know if it's Final Four caliber. But deep run. I can definitely see it in the Elite Eight. Yeah, I definitely agree. Because Gruff has only one strategy when it comes to fighting its opponents. And that is... Be a tank. It's the Hell's Angels approach to strategy, in which I got to see in action uh, last year in Orlando. And it was... It's a really effective robot, especially in close quarters combat. And I gotta say, with a, with a lot of lifters this year, this is definitely looking good for Gruff. The fact that it took Tombstone to the limit says a lot about the engineering and the build quality of the robot. And let's also not forget its dual-wielding flamethrowers this time around. And Gruff has the best flamethrower in all of BattleBots. I do not want anybody to debate me on that. That is a fact. No, you're absolutely correct. Got the hottest by temperature, I think. It, the fact that it's just three flamethrowers stacked onto each other. It looks like something off of Bowser's Doom Ship from Super Mario Bros. 3. Hmm. That is a really good way to look at it, yeah. Just this coming out of the bot. Oh my god, I love Gruff, and I will be rooting for them this season. And by the way, Justin, I hate to gaslight you, but you're wrong. Gruff was actually named after the fairy tale of the three billy goats Gruff. Really? That's very impressive. It really fits the name, and... Like I said, it's a gruff robot with a strategy to match. And now we move on to a new-ish team for 2020, and that is the big lawn-mowing owl of hijinks. Also, the best 80s new wave band that never was. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> I say they're a new-ish team because... Two of the members split off from Scorpios, who we'll be talking about. We've got Orion Beach as the driver, and the captain is Jen Hershenroder. And yes, I said that right. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this one, because it reminds me of a lot of uh, Rust Barrow's bots, like Dark Blade and Dark Slayer. So I'm hoping, regardless of how it does, we do get to see some really nice hits that send other bots to, across the battle box. It has a very big, beefy blade underneath it with sparse bodywork, which is going to make it hard to grab onto. My only worry is the wheels. Those very Ooh. spindly-looking wheels. I have to agree that those wheels are very spindly. 
And frankly, I just hope that I just hope that they don't cross that bridge, to be honest with you. But I, what impresses me most is how they back up that show car quality paint, easily top three best in the show, by the way, with the with that bite. I mean, that blade is massive. And it juts out from the robot, so it's got plenty of distance between the blade and its bodywork. And that, I think, is going to be their best asset. This is one of the ones I'm most excited to see uh, fight for the first time. When you have Orion Beach as your driver, you're in safe hands. Whatever concerns I have about hijinks are going to be mitigated by his driving. Yep, that is yep. 